Hey, thanks for checking out the Mixed Church YouTube channel. I hope today's message helps you with your walk with Jesus and puts you closer to Him. We are towards the tail end of this series called Move of God. It's also a two-year vision campaign um, that uh, we're doing um, some pledging today towards. Um, but essentially, um, we are believing uh, that God is going to move in and through our church and our city. Um, and in our world, and a big piece of it is that we believe God is going to provide a, uh, a more permanent facility, a place to call home for us as a church. And so um, at the end of uh, this service, as Austin said, we're going to be um, taking up our pledges. There's two boxes. Uh, if you're a planner, you can start planning your attack. But if you've got a physical card, let me grab mine. Um, if you got a card like I do, um, we're gonna we're gonna put them in the boxes at the end of my message. Um, if you didn't um, uh, fill out a, a physical card, but you are prepared to do so, and you're like, oh, I don't even want to fill out the one that they got because I don't have something to put underneath the the pledge card, and I don't want them to think that I have bad handwriting, and because that's a really big deal in church. Um, Go to uh, mix.church slash move of God. I think we might have a, a, a slide here. Yeah, just scan that QR code. That's going to take you to a digital um, move of God pledge card that you can fill out right now or at any time um, today. If you're not prepared and you're like, man, maybe you've been here the last three weeks and you're like, I mean, I just haven't gotten around to it, haven't had a whole lot of time to stop and think about what God wants me to pledge to in this season, no rush. Don't make a hasty decision today um, unless it's got like six zeros at the end of it. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Don't rush into this, man. We don't, we don't want, don't give out a compulsion, right? That's what Paul said. So take the day, take the week and fill out a digital connect card um, in the next few days as you're ready. And then next weekend, we are going to have a special move of God offering. Um, as you see on the pledge card, there, it, there's a, a category that says gifts from stored resources. And essentially next weekend, we're going to be taking a special move of God of offering in which this week we're, we're pledging, we're committing, mostly just put it on on paper. Um, but next week, we want to take our best, uh, strongest foot forward um, and maybe start praying, okay, God, how do you want me to kick this off? Um, and for some of us, it's going to look different for everyone. For some of us, it's going to be looking at our savings, you know, maybe looking at some investments and you're going to donate some stock. Yes, we can take stock. Um, but for others of us, maybe it's like, man, I, I don't have anything in my savings. Um, but maybe just over the next week, you don't go to Interval Coffee. I talk with Ryan, the owner. He's fine. They're going to be just fine, okay? I just don't want them to go broke. They're not going broke. You're doing just fine. Um, but maybe it looks like you just don't go out to eat this week and you set aside that money and, hey, I'm going to put that towards the move of God offering next weekend. We're not going to be taking up an additional offering. It's going to happen um, within our regular uh, time of offering, but I hope that you'll prepare for that um, and uh, join me and Jackie as we do that. Actually, on our pledge card, no lie, it says TBD on the gifts from stored service because uh, we didn't really pray about that yet. So we'll talk about that um, this upcoming week as we get ready for the move of God offering on the 10th. All right. Who's ready to get in God's word? Show of hands. If you're with me, say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Let's go to our theme verse for this entire series, which is Joshua chapter three, verses one through four. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to what? Move. All right, let's try that again. So like if I say what, you just read the next word. You are to move. Great, move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. And then I want to take us to uh, uh, verses 14 through 16, which is what we're going to talk about in a few minutes. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage, all during harvest. Again, when will God call you to take a baby step of bold faith? The worst time, the worst time. And yet, as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, 
was completely cut off. This morning, I want to share a message entitled Spirit-Filled Skepticism. Spirit-Filled Skepticism. Thanks, Kaden. <laughs> Sorry, I had a joke with Kaden. I said, hey, after I get my message out, you can make your way off stage. I was like, unless you want an attaboy, you can just keep playing, and then I'll say thank you, Kaden. He wanted the attaboy, so you got it. Um, <laughs> throughout this series, I've tried to empathize with those of you who have a pretty strong skeptical muscle. How many of y'all got a pretty strong skeptic muscle? It's all right. I'm not going to judge you, all right? Um, you know, maybe you're a bit skeptical of exactly what we're doing right now. Like maybe your first time guest at Big Church, you're like, oh my goodness, came to church because, or I stopped going to church because they talked too much about money and then ding, 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 first Sunday back, money. Um, and you're skeptical of, you know, uh, churches doing what they're doing and are they really doing what they say they're going to do. Um, and, and I get all that. I've tried to empathize with that. I have also challenged you a little bit, gotten a little spicy last weekend. It was a little spicy level three. Um, so I've challenged you, but I can empathize because I too have a pretty strong um, skepticism muscle. Uh, I too oftentimes look around at what I see and I, I kind of, uh, like case in point, one of the things uh, that I'll hear said in church, because I've been in church a long time, is when um, people say, look at what God did. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm looking, you know. Um, like six months ago, I think it was, um, uh, I, I saw a friend of mine, a friend of mine posted on, on social media, they had like a worship night and it was like, man, look at what God did. And I was like scrolling through the pictures and I was like, what do you do? I like, can't quite see, like, you know, like raised, I see some people there. That's awesome. I mean, that's awesome. I see some hands raised in worship. Cool. Love that. Some great pictures of the worship team up there, man. Awesome. But I mean, Sorry, I'm having a hard time. What did God do? Tell me, you know? And, and, and to be fair, I, I have the same skepticism towards our church, where I, even as we're in this series and I'm like, we're gonna see a move of God, the skeptic in me is like, okay, you are? Really? How are you gonna know when you see it, right? You know, have you figured, thought about that one, Jake? Yeah. Even in this season right now where, man, there's something special happening in our church, um, our church is growing numerically. Uh, year to year, uh, we are up 40% in, in attendance from, we were at like 185 people this time last year to just over 250, 260 people on a Sunday, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. And like the church planter in me who remembers planting a church and it was like me and my folks and like four other people is like, dude, this is amazing. Look at what God is doing. But the skeptic is me is like, mm, slow your roll. And I think there's actually some benefit to that side of skepticism because I'm like, eh, you know, church is growing. Does that mean God is moving amongst us? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Because the reality is, is that attendance is one of the more shallow metrics as far as measuring how a church is, is doing by itself. It doesn't tell much of the story, I mean, and this is going to offend like three of you, but a lot of people, and I'm talking about a lot, a lot of people still go to Nickelback concerts. <laughs> that went over a lot of your head, so let me, uh, you know, modify it and offend way more people. A lot of you went and saw Barbie, you know, and it's like, <laughs> I didn't see it. Um, notice that I didn't even put the word yet in there. I just said, I didn't see it. Uh, no, but it's like I'm skeptical of what I see right in front of me. And, 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 and then on top of that, it doesn't end with the church. I'm, I'm skeptical of what I see in my own life. Anyone else just, you got a kind of a skeptical eye towards what you see happening, what you think God is doing. It's on a daily basis where I'm looking at something in my life and going, really, God? You're working, huh? Because you're praying about something and what you're seeing in your life is not necessarily in, in accordance with what you're praying for. And you're seeking the Lord, trusting in him, maybe singing a little bit louder on Sunday mornings. You're on like anything. anything. And you're, yet you look at your life and you're kind of like, huh, yeah, really? Come on, let's have some honest uh, church today. Show of hands, how many of y'all are either looking at right now or at least you have looked at something in your life at one point in time and you've been quite skeptical of God working in your life? Show of hands, anyone? Anyone? Okay, great, all right. No, man, we, we, we all are skeptics. 
And yet today, I want to kind of spin things, and I want to suggest that that side of your skepticism is actually not your, it's not your faith's biggest problem. That side of your skepticism is, is not the greatest threat to experiencing a move of God. What I'd like to suggest today is that it's the reality that, that your, your skepticism doesn't have another side to it. This isn't making any sense, and so let me, let me try to clarify it, Okay. This is, this is the side of our skepticism that we're all very well versed in. We're skeptical with what we see. We're, we're skeptical with what is on the surface of our lives. We, we, whether it's with other people, and people say, man, man, God spoke to me. Come on, how many of y'all, when someone takes you out to God, they're like, yeah, the Lord was speaking to me. Your first thought is, really? Did he? Dude, God speaks to me all the time, and I still, every time anyone else says God spoke to me, I'm like, mm -hmm, really? Skeptical when, you know, people talk about how God moved on their behalf, right? Eh, did he know? I remember telling an atheist a story when we were playing the church, and uh, I was working at the YMCA making a whole uh, $10 an hour, and the Lord had been making a way for our church plant, and we had gotten a facility, and I was telling this atheist that I was working with, I was like, dude, God was moving. Like, let me tell you about just how God got us a building that we're renting, Milwaukee Lutheran High School. I met this person, and I told them about the church, and they were like, oh, that's cool. And then I met this person who uh, knew that person, and then they actually knew uh, one of the, the um, uh, faculty members at, at the church and then I was at this basketball ministry and another teacher came and he was like this is amazing what you're doing we got to get you into the school that I'm at and we ended up getting into Milwaukee Lutheran High School to have our church like look at what God moved and he was like God he's like it sounds like good networking and I was like touche <laughs> now we're, we're skeptical of what we see happening in other people's lives and then we are skeptical of what's happening in our own lives looking and going, really, really? But, but here's, the, here's the bigger issue. The bigger issue is not so much with this side. I want to suggest that actually the way that you combat this side of your skepticism is we get a little bit more practice in this side. This is the other side of your skepticism, which is skeptical of what you don't see. How often do you consider what you don't see with a very skeptical eye? Like, when was the last time you didn't see God working in your life and instead of jumping to the conclusion that God was not working in your life, you were like, hmm, I don't know about that. Hmm, I mean, just I mean, just because I don't see him working doesn't mean that he's not working. But when was the last time that you prayed about something and, and you took a baby step of bold faith, you, you stepped into it, and, and, and five months later, like, you really didn't see a whole lot of change, and instead of jumping to the conclusion that God had abandoned you, you were like, ah, you know what, I'm just going to slow down here a little bit, okay? I'm kind of a skeptic with stuff like this. I'm talking about the skepticism of what we don't see. I was toying around with uh, a lot of different sermon titles, you know, double-sided uh, skepticism, the other side of skepticism, but I landed with spirit-filled skepticism. Being skeptical of what we don't see, and this is so, so important for us mixed church as we are all taking baby steps of, of bold faith today in this, in this series, but also just in our personal lives, in our finances, yeah, sure, but also in relationships also in your career, I, I hope again that you're getting the point that this whole thing is not just about this church. This is about experiencing a move of God in your lives. And what we need to understand and therefore be prepared for is this, is that we often are skeptical. We often grow skeptical of what we see and certain of what we don't. This is the human condition. We are skeptical of what we see, but certain of what we do. We look at our lives and we go, I don't, you know, I don't know if God is, is working because what I'm seeing doesn't match up. But then when it comes down to what we don't see, man, we can write a whole story out of what we don't see happening in our lives. And this is something that we've got to get better at if we're going to take baby steps of bold faith.
today. That this is something that, that we've got to lean into, start, start developing, because there's a good chance, there's a good chance that you're not going to see God move. In which case it's like, Whoop. Mel Turnip Seed is like, I don't know if that was your words because we kind of put the whole see a move of God, be a move of God right there on the brochure. Brochure, brochure, brochure. Sorry, that was awkward. Mel helped uh, uh, with that tagline. She did such a great job of it. We initially had city, church, world, and then she was like, no, I need something more provocative, something that makes people lean in. She's like, see a move of God, be a move of God. I was like, oh, my goodness, that is so much better. We should do that. And yet here I am. Now I was like, yeah, you might not see a move of God. Want to. It's our desire. It's what we're praying for, and yet we might not see God move, and here's how I know that, because in Joshua chapter 3, we get a very, very beautiful but sobering picture of how God often moves in our life. I don't know if you caught this when we read the scripture earlier, but let's, let's read it again, verses 14 through 16. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing, piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the Dead Sea was completely cut off. If you don't remember when I touched on this message this time last year, here's some additional insight. In, in Joshua chapter 4, 13, Scripture states that the whole nation of Israel crossed the Jordan River after it had been drained, and they went into the plains of Jericho. And here in Joshua chapter 3, verse 16, we're told that the, when the priest's feet hit the water's edge, the water from upstream in a town called Adam stopped flowing. Old Testament scholars are almost unanimous in believing that the town Adam was 20 to 30 miles upstream from the plains of Jericho. And let's resist the temptation to make this story more extravagant than it might have been. And so let's just roll with 20 miles the miracle took place 20 miles upstream um, to help us understand in our own lives. The equivalent to the north of us would be Port Washington. The equivalent to the south of us would be Racine. How many of y'all are just going to hop up to Port Washington for some brunch right after service? Is that one of your options with your friends? We should swing by Port Washington. Oh, this is a great place in Port Washington. Racine, everyone goes, nope. No, nah, we're not going to Racine. 20 miles upstream, that is almost seven times further than the average person can see. No, I didn't know that before this last week, all right? That's that type of stuff that pastors don't know. We flex and we're like, yes, yeah, if you didn't know this, the average person can see 2.9 miles because I know how to use Google. Uh, well, that's, that's how far a person can see. On a relatively flat surf, surface, the average person can see 2.9 miles, essentially up until the horizon. And then at that point, due to the curvature of the, uh, the earth, Kyrie Irving, um, you, you can't see beyond the horizon. Okay, here's what I hope you're, 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 you're making sense of. Israel never saw God move. Oh, God moved. God did what he said he would do. Israel actually never saw it. God miraculously intervened, but well, well outside Israel's ability to see, well beyond the horizon. And I wish that I could tell you that this is really like an isolated event in Scripture. This is actually kind of the outlier. You see, typically when God does things, he does it right in plain sight, right in front of you. It's more like the Red Sea parting where it's just like, oh my goodness, that is so God. Can't tell you that because it's just not true. In fact, Joshua 3 right here, this miracle, this is the typical way that God works. This is, this is how God usually goes about his business in doing miracles and moving in our lives well beyond what you can see, 
well beyond the horizon. Get in tune with scripture and start to learn about the God that you love and you will find over and over again, God operates beyond our understanding. His ways are higher than our ways. Thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Ephesians, you know, our God who is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine sounds great until you get the gra you grasp it and you go, you can't measure it. Can't even ask for it because you don't even know it. Can't even imagine it. God is constantly doing things beyond what, what we can see. God is, God is much more like Jackie than he is like me in the way that he likes the behind the scenes stuff. He, he likes doing the things that, that no one really points to. Just like Jackie, y'all don't even know how much stuff she does for this church. <laughs> that he does, God doesn't need a platform all the time. God doesn't need a microphone to say, hello, I just want to announce I'm at work. But most of the time, no, it's, it's out of sight. He's occupying spaces that we can't see. This is the spiritual realm. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but rather against principalities, rulers of this, this dark world. There's something going on that I can't see, and God is all up in its business. God is working. God is constantly doing things that we can't see. He's intervening in ways that we will never be aware of. I mean, mix. Let's not forget that, that the event that changed the world and continues to change our lives here in 2024 was the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I don't know about y'all, but I wasn't there for it. Closest thing I got is Jim Caviezel, Passion of the Christ. Didn't see the crucifixion. And yet something that I, I really can't even imagine, like something that I wasn't there for, didn't see, happened 2,000 years before me, is still working me over. Still changing you. And changing billions of people's lives, much like our own. And, and so in light of the fact that God works beyond the horizon, in light of the fact that, that God likes to work behind the, the, the scenes, in light of how God usually moves, we're going to need some, let's call it, spirit-filled skepticism of what we don't see if we're gonna experience a move of God. Because get this, in light of how God usually works, this is how I want us to start training our minds in this season. A lack of evidence that God is moving is just as much evidence that he is. I can't see what God is doing and therefore God must not be doing anything. Nope, nope, gotta stop that. Gotta stop that. Tap one of your neighbors real quick. Say, gotta stop that. Look at your other neighbor say, hey, I love you. I really do. Tell him I care about you. Come on but you gotta stop that. It's actually a very uneducated thing to say. You must not know much about your God if that's the, the conclusion you jump to. No, no, you gotta, we, gotta, we gotta stop that. No, 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 a lack of evidence is just as much evidence that God is working because we are now acquainted with his track record. We are now acquainted with how he usually works. And so when you can't see him doing anything, you're not going to jump to the conclusion that God's not doing something, but you are gonna flex that little spirit-filled skepticism within you and go, hmm, you sure about that? Y'all see that meme on Instagram? Y'all, is this old? Am I showing my age? Is this still a thing? Hmm, you sure about that? That's, that's the voice that I want you to have in your head as you're following Christ. And every time you look at your life, you're like, well, I don't see God here. And I don't see what he's doing here. And you start going, ah, God must be, God must have left me. You go, hmm, you sure about that? Because them Israelites, they didn't see God working. I was thinking about this. Then we could do it in my, put it in my manuscript, but I got to go here. The people up in Adam got a bigger show than the Israelites. I tried using one of them AI illustrators. I couldn't figure it out because I am a boomer in my heart. I really am, guys. I have aged very fast. And I was like, oh, can I, I want to get the, because I wanted to paint this picture of what it looked like up in Adam. Jordan is at flood stage, mile wide. God stops it. He dams it up. It starts piling up in a heap. Imagine the people in Adam and what they saw happen. Israelites going to get to it in a little bit, but didn't see a whole lot when they stepped in. Adam, 
And you know what? That is going to be the story of this campaign and this vision. That's gonna happen time and time again as we follow Jesus in our own lives where get this, you're gonna experience a move of God. You're gonna experience the miraculous. You know, we share these stories because I hope we're getting, it's like, it's actually kind of miraculous that people aren't greedy with their money. That's why we share the testimonials. That's a working of the spirit that people would get outside their own dreams and desires. And you're gonna experience this if you haven't already, where the Holy Spirit is gonna work on your heart. And you have spent the last 20 years, 10 years, five years, greedy and afraid of the future. And oh my God, I don't know if I'm ever gonna have enough. And then the Holy Spirit is gonna change you, convict you, and all of a sudden you're gonna go, start going like this. And peace is gonna come into your life. And anxiety is going to flee. And a miracle is gonna happen in you. And you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. And the people who are recipients of your generosity will not have seen that. They're going to go like, oh, this is cool. You get that? Like when we cut a check, I think it's going to be around $10,000 for um, a sex trafficking mission, rescue mission that we're going to do with IJM. I will likely get on IJM and hit send $10,000. Everyone over there is going to be like, this is awesome. This is really great. This is going to move the mission forward and it's going to save people's lives. While as the miracle over here is like, oh my gosh, you don't even know what happened over here. That, that's what's happening here in, in Joshua chapter three. Israel, Israel stepping out, baby step of bold faith. And God immediately intervenes. But man, it, they don't see it initially. And, and the question, the question that a lot of us are gonna face in this vision initiative, really just again in our journey with Jesus is, can you stay skeptical of what you don't see long enough to get a glimpse of what God was doing all along? Can you stay skeptical of what you don't see long enough to get just a little bit of a glimpse of what God had been doing for years? Because Israel and specifically the Levitical priests who were holding the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders as they stood in the Jordan River, they didn't see God move. They did not see the place where he intervened. They only saw the effect of God moving. And warning, here comes some more great news, right? They only saw the impact of the miracle that God was performing up in Adam. And the impact was slow and really inconspicuous. When all the feet of the 12 priests were in the water, Scripture says God immediately stopped the flow of the Jordan. God immediately intervened, but the impact was gradual. Scholars point out that because of the miraculous move of God happened 20 to 30 miles upstream from them, the Levitical priests very likely stood in the Jordan River for two to four hours while the Jordan River drained. Again, let's not be too dramatic. Let's go with two hours. Two hours. Let's have some fun here. Stand with me. Stand with me. Okay. You guys be Israel, all right? Because I'm the mic, got the mic, I'll be the Levitical priest. Deal? All right. You guys be Israel. We're on the banks of the Jordan. I'll be the Levitical priest. All right. We're getting ready. Got the word from Joshua. They got from God. Got to go step into it, okay? You guys hang tight here. Cool. You guys good? Good? All right, great, okay. We're gonna go do what we gotta do, Levitical things, all right? All right, here we go. Let me get out something here real quick. All right, ready? If you're ready, say, oh yeah. All right. And we're stepping into the Jordan in three, two, one. Oop, sorry, hold on a second. I'm holding the ark. <sighs> God bless you. <laughs> that 
that manna last night, right? Dude, that was great. What did Ruth put the spices? Oh my gosh. You, she, she needs to talk to my wife. We're at 50 seconds. Should have wore my insoles. stand there before getting fidgety how long would you stand there looking down at the river and going I don't see much happening oh by the way again they had a word that God would stop the flow but again they didn't know that it happened like they didn't, they didn't send someone up into Adam Josiah run up to Adam and then text us, all right? Yeah. Nope, just stepped in. How long would you stand there? How long would you remain in the word that God gave you while you waited to experience him move? How long would you be able to, to stand in the thing that God called you to step into and wait, wait, three minutes how long would you stand here because y'all following Jesus is two things it's steps and standing it's baby steps of bold faith and then just standing in the thing you stepped into it's in this in this Pledge Sunday as we're, we're, we're going to be stepping into this vision, bringing our part. It's stepping in and saying, okay, God, and I know this is true for a lot of you because I've already seen some of the pledge cards come in this last week. It's been awesome. Seeing people saying, hey, I'm changing, I'm shifting. If you're wondering why it has, you put in what you're stepping up to is because, man, we want to see what are you stepping up to? Like, you're doing a whole lot of the same. No, no, no. Where people are filling out and saying, no, I'm stepping up, and this is where I'm going with this, and you step into that. Awesome. Man, that's amazing. Next, here you want to know the next part of the process? Stand in it. Stand. 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 Stand in it in six months. And in six months, when you really don't notice much change, and maybe even a few things in life happen and the car breaks down and you're like, oh, uh, what? Jake said prosperity. I did not, you liar. But you're like, do what? Stand. Stand. I'm gonna stand here. Stepping into God's design for our sexuality, and I'm talking to everyone, because in everybody's situation, we have a unique way in which we must submit to the sexuality that God has given us. Stand, and we step in. All right, God, I'm doing this your way. I'm saving it till marriage. You said that that's the best shot, so I'm saving it till that. And then stand, and stand as culture says you're an idiot. Stand as culture idolizes it. Stand, and stand as your flesh cries out over and over again. Stand, stepping into the forgiveness. I'm going to forgive them today. I'm going to forgive them. And you step, and then you stand. And you stand, 
and in a year from now, all of a sudden they flash up on your Instagram, how did that happen? I'm not even following them. And the person that hurt you seems to be doing pretty well. And then you gotta what? Stand. Nope, I took the step. Gonna stand in it now. Stepping and standing, how long will you be able to stand in what God called you to step into? It's not a trick question, y'all. Pretty clear answer to that question all throughout scripture. And it's so beautifully illustrated here in Joshua chapter three. Here's the answer. You will stand in the promise of God for however long you hold on to the presence of God. The Levitical priest stepped into that Jordan River holding what? The Ark of the Covenant. The very presence of God in their midst. Last week I made a comment about like, I know this preaching is shallow and I really need to apologize and not say that. This is not shallow preaching. This is just such simple preaching that's just right there on the surface. They were holding on to God. I, that's a long time to stand and I got bad hips and so I'm sure a lot of you young guns would be just fine. But like truthfully standing in that room for two hours just standing there with a the weight on my, I gotta believe, again, let's not read into scripture. But I gotta believe that there was something happening between them and the presence of God right there in that Jordan River. How long will you stand in the presence of God? For however long you hold on to the presence of God. And the great news that we have, church, is that we don't have a box, we have the Holy Spirit within us. How long will you be able to stand in what God's called you to step into? However long you lean into the Holy Spirit. However long you just continue to fall at his feet. You will stand for however long you, you look to the name of Jesus, call on the name of Jesus, who is a very present help in our time of need. How long will you stand? You will stand for however long you just continue to, to operate, not in strength, not in might, but in the spirit of the living God. Today we step. Tomorrow will you stand. Tuesday will you stand take up these pledges here. If you've got your physical one on you, get it out, hold it in your hands. Jackie, can you come up here if you're in the room? She's ready. If you got a physical copy, awesome. In a second, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to do it with my wife here. Throw it in like that. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. Two of them. But I know that a lot of you probably filled out a digital one. And so here's what I want us to do. I want us all to do a little something, something here, okay? The scripture says, Joshua 3, 1 through 4, that you're going to have to move out from your positions and follow it. Okay, so for those of you who filled out pledge cards, paper ones, put them in the box. Great. For those of you who didn't fill out, doing a digital one later today, or, or maybe this week, or you already did the digital one, cool. I want all of us to get out of your position. And I want you to stand up here in the front, stand up the aisles. You're like, oh, I don't want to come down the front. Cool, stand on the aisles. Just get out. This is, a, this is a very important moment for us as a church, and I want to punctuate it by literally moving. And so Jackie and I, I'm going to pray with her and, and we're going to pray over this campaign and the moves that God is calling us to make. And then as soon as I say amen, uh, staff, if you would lead us, I know you're prepared, bring up your cards and then just find a spot to stand. And we're just going to start practicing what we're going to be needing to do. Maybe over the next two years for this vision campaign, it would be awesome if God made the way sooner. But beyond the building, what God's doing in your life, let's, let's get a little practice, okay? Let's pray right now. Holy Spirit. Um, we just, uh, we come and we surrender to you, God. This step is a sign of surrender, of saying, God, we, we want more of you. We want to experience you. We want a firsthand faith, God, not something that we just simply hear about on Sunday mornings, but something that we experience firsthand on a Monday morning. Oh God, as we step, oh God, teach us to lean on you when our knees shake. Teach, teach us to trust. Holy 
Spirit, as your word says, that we would be able to strengthen our weak knees. Not because of some confidence that we have in our own ability, not because things are going great in our life, but merely because we are filled with the presence of God. God, I pray miracles over this community. Yeah, I want to see a miracle in a building, God. I want this church to find a home, and I want, I want God, I, I want you to put it on a silver platter for this church. God, let there be no doubt that it was you. But you want to know what? If you want to do it gradually, and it's conversation after conversation, it's conversation, maybe there's going to be a little bit of debating, and a little, and some are going to try to, ha- you know, hustle us, and we're not going to be hustled, you know, and we're just going to have a lot of conversations, and then all of a sudden it's going to be like, boom, yep, we got it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Lord, believe in that you're going to make a way. And now, God, I pray for every single person, Lord, because maybe, I know there's so many in this room, they're like, dude, this vision campaign is the last thing I'm thinking about because this just happened. We're praying miracles, moves, moves of God. Teach us to step, strengthen us to stand. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Will you join me right now? If I didn't make it clear, let me clarify. You can bring your pledges up to the box right now. Okay. Regardless of whether you did paper or digital, I want you to move out and just stand. We're going to practice standing. step into the awkwardness. This is awkward right now. If you feel awkward, that's because it feels awkward. That's what standing feels like. That's what waiting feels like. That's what faithfulness feels like. In a prior message, I would say it feels like wet feet. Hallelujah. experience this spirit-filled skepticism unless you are standing where God told you to stand. This is where we get highly skeptical. And like those Levitical priests standing there, standing there, you know what they were saying? I don't see anything just yet. I don't see it, but God said, but God said, but God said, let's practice that. But God said, but God said, But God said, I don't see anything. Nope, not gonna jump to the conclusion that he's not working. God said he's working. Nope, not not, not gonna gonna start flaking out. No, no, but God said, God said. And so here I stand. God likes doing things behind the scenes. So if I can't see him working, man, there's just as great odds that he is working. God said, God said. And then, and then, here's what we're going to have to do, okay? I want a skepticism in, towards what we want to see, and I want to start growing confident in what we do see. Because again, standing right there, we're at 15 minutes, coming up on 15 minutes. You think they saw something? I don't know. Think maybe they saw a little bit of something? Might have been hard to tell at 15 minutes. Let's, let's, let's. Fast forward 45 minutes? Come on. Dallas Willard said, they're humans just like us in these stories. So think about maybe what a human might have done. You're standing there, you're standing there, you're standing there, and all of a sudden Phil looks over and he's like, dude, look. And you look down and they're probably wearing robes or something like that. And you notice that the water line was here, but now it's here. What happens? Oh my God, I think he's moving. You know what scripture says, do not despise small beginnings. And in this season, stay skeptical of what you don't see, but start looking for the fingerprints. 
And you ain't got to be all, you know, oh my God, look what he's doing. Look at what God did. You don't have to be like proclaiming all that. That's fine. That's fine. But in your heart, you start going, ah, ah, I see. God's doing something here. You didn't freak out at your wife the way that you usually freak out. Like, whew, I think God's doing something. Look, the water line, honey. And you let yourself be encouraged by the small things. You feast. That's the word I got from a friend of mine this last week. Would you just enjoy the small things that God is doing? Always thinking 10 years and I'll get... Can I be transparent? Transparent? Is that all right? Cool. It's been my dream to write music for a church. That song dropped on, on Friday, and my friend, he prophesied over me. He said, man, I just feel like God is saying, feast, feast, feast. Just taste and see that the Lord is good. And so on Friday, I just said, you know what? I'm not going to be all disclaimer about this stuff, and I'm not going to be thinking about, well, odds are is that this is probably one of our worst songs, because if we keep progressing, this is going to be one of our worst songs. No, 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 no. Just, oh, God, you are so faithful. I see you. I see what you've done. What is it for you? All right, so, so in light of what we can't see, what we don't see, eh, you sure that God's not working? Okay, but now, right now, think to your, to your life right now. What's the small thing you need to start celebrating today? What's the small, small change that you've seen that you need to champion? And you need to say, thank you, God. I don't see it yet. But I see something. Because here's what's going to happen for all of us in some way, at some time. We're going to have that moment say, look at what God did. And the world around us is going to go like, mm, looks like good networking to me. Sounds like you had a good real estate agent. Sounds like you read James Clear and, and that habit book. And you just applied some habits to your life. Not us though, we'll go, nah. I stood there. We're gonna introduce a new song um, to you guys. It's, a, it's not in any way like what's being played right now, and so I need you to buckle up, okay? But it's a song that's right on the nose of the series called Move. And uh, this is how the chorus goes, so you're ready for it. I've seen enough to know that you're good. Nothing in this world can change my mind. I've seen enough. Today, Holy Spirit, we are saying in faith, we've seen enough. Don't need another miracle. Don't need another word from you. Seen enough to move. And so, Holy Spirit, we just consecrate this space. We consecrate the next season for our church, for our lives. And we are saying, God, we'd love for you to show up. We'd love to see it. But just so you know, hey, we've got enough evidence got enough in front of us to make some moves. We welcome you, Lord. We pray this in your name. Come on, somebody say amen. Let's jam. Thanks again for checking out the Mixed Church YouTube channel. If you'd like to connect with us, you can connect with us through the App Store by searching Mixed Church, or you can connect with us online by searching mix.church connect. See you next week. <laughs>